Joe has discovered that Salome was living in Brumat in 1870, at the outbreak of the Franco-Prussian War. To find out more, she's arranged to meet local military historian, Benoit Sigrist. Bonjour. Bonjour. You're Benoit. I'm Benoit. Hello, I'm Joe. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay, Brumat was a normal town before the war. Right. 3,000 people were living here in such houses like this one, typically as Right. Okay, or like this one. That's it your is. family house. Oh my God, yes. you're joking. Yeah. That no, no, one? No. In this house, Salome lived. Oh, I can't believe it, really. Let's go and see the house. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Ça va. C'est vous qui, qui habitez ici? Oui, oui on est propriétaire. Oui. On peut rentrer? Oui, venez. Je vous fais voir. Merci beaucoup. Je vous fais voir. C'est tout petit, hein? I can't believe it. Oh. It's incredible. I've never dreamt we'd see the house. Absolutely incredible. Benoit has found a residency agreement for the house, which Salome's mother, Christine Bergtolt, signed three years after the death of her husband. The owner grant the use of the house to Christine Bergtolt and her children. To because use, she, she didn't, didn't own it. She didn't own it. This is very touching. Jacques, he posthumous was, child. He was born after his, her, father's, after his father's death, yeah. Exactly. So Jacques, at this point, is he born in six, so he's now years, three. Years. And he lived in this house. Oh, till, he? till he died oh, in he? 1943. In 1943 he yeah. died? Really? So this was Jacques' house. Wow. And here's Salome. She was 12 when her father died. Yeah. 14 oh, yeah. now. Two and a half years later, the Franco Prussian War broke out uh, 40 kilometers away, north, away from Brunner. My family seems to have had a real talent for being wherever there was trouble. It seems like <laughs> it's true. Every, everywhere I go, someone starts dropping bombs or firing shells. So, at this time, yeah. did people in this area consider themselves French? Oh, they were very, very patriotic. And their allegiance was to France? Oh, yeah, sure. In July 1870, when Salome was only 16 years old, simmering tensions between France and Prussia erupted into war. Although Alsace had been part of France for 300 years, the Prussian Prime Minister Otto von Bismarck wanted the province back as part of a new German empire. On the 6th of August, the French army confronted Prussia and its allies at the Battle of Wörth in northern Alsace, only a day's march from Brumat. There were 80,000 German soldiers on one side and 45,000 French soldiers. And it's one of the bloodiest battles of the Franco-Prussian War. In 10 hours, there were 20,000 people who died in 10 hours. 20,000. The French army yes. was cut in two, and one part go south through Brumat to go to Strasbourg. I okay. see. The mayor from Brumat wrote exactly what happens. Here you have translation. In the evening, the first troops which had fled from the French army arrived in Brumat, saying everything is lost. Infantry on horses, cavalry on foot, and soldiers of all types made up a motley group these poor wretches were even treated as cowards by some of the people in Pumat. It's very possible that um, Salome and her family were seeing these troops pass under their window. Most, more than possible, for sure. And I'm guessing the Prussians were close on these people's tails. Yeah. They're coming to Pumat now. Yeah. On Monday, the 8th of August, several German regiments arrived in Pumat. And Tuesday, oh, oh my goodness, Tuesday, 18,000 soldiers arrived yeah. and camped nearby the Hochstetter house. 18,000 soldiers descend Here, on this area. tiny little town. Yes, 3,000 inhabitants. This is an invasion to them. For, this, for, for them, it's, it's, it's clearly an invasion. My great great grandmother, what do you think it would have been like for her? I think everything stopped, as the normal life she had stopped. You can't go to school anymore. You can't go outside of your house like you did before. They have to give everything they can to the soldier. Anyway, there's no choice. Yeah, of course. <laughs> there's no choice. Yeah, under pain so of death, are coming, coming in the, into the house and say, OK, we take eggs, we take milk, we take everything you have. It was very, so very difficult. So I just feel like she had trauma upon trauma. Yeah. She loses her father at 12. They have a very brief period of security. security. Exactly. And then the town's invaded. Yes, and 
the people here, and Salome also, I think, and her mother, don't, absolutely don't know what will happen at the end of the war. Every day. The fate of Salome and her family rested on the defense of the Alsatian capital, Strasbourg, where the remains of the French army had taken refuge. Using Brumat as their base, German forces besieged the city for six weeks. They fired almost 200,000 artillery shells into Strasbourg, destroying much of it and killing thousands of men, women and children. Many of the German soldiers who died in the siege were buried in Brumat. At the end of the siege, 27th of September, everybody here in the area are in expectation what, what will happen on the 8th of October. The real announcement came, Strasbourg ist und bleibt Deutsch. Strasbourg is and will remain, remain German. German, exactly. Would it be true to say then that on the 8th of October, my family effectively became German? Not for sure. Because months later, at the Treaty of Frankfurt, uh -huh. it was a treaty between France and Germany, there was an article which said that people can choose <gasps> whether they want to remain French or they want to become German. Right. The problem is Bismarck said, OK, you can choose, but if you remain French, OK, goodbye. Leave your place and go. Go to France. To France. Oh, exactly. that choice. That, that was a choice. That's great, isn't it? They were called the Optant. The Optant. And they had to sign a paper. So if you want to know if your family became German or remained French. I've got to find the opting paper. Exactly. Under the harsh terms of Bismarck's choice, 125,000 people, almost 10% of the population of Alsace and the neighboring province of Lorraine, gave up their homes and livelihoods to remain French and left. The rest, mostly poor peasant farmers dependent on their land, became citizens of the new Germany. I started this very much thinking I was going to look for my French roots. And now I discover there's a possibility that those French roots might have turned German at some point. I'd love to think they made the decision to remain French. I think it would have been very brave, but um, that might be a step too far for a family that was living, I think, on the very verge of, of extreme poverty. So um, maybe we are more German than I thought. <laughs>